Funny, funny. He's met a wonderful girl, another much la uh, maligned um, part of society. I think they call them single mothers. Well, yeah, she's a mother and she's single, but she's a wonderful girl. And she works uh, for the public service, for the, for the public health, but for one of the movers in the ship is in the private industry where you get investment, not subsidy. Uh, and uh, she's a care assistant. She spends her time using her own car on minimum wage, going round and visiting um, elderly people and pensioners, helping them tidy their house, do a bit of overing, help them with the washing up, and all these other essential services um, that you, you come to expect that you would get some sort of help with uh, when you've worked all your life, paid your tax, paid your national insurance, paid your pensions, and she's going round there. And she went to work um, not long ago. Uh, I'm not going to embarrass her with the company that she worked for, because, you know, well, that, you know what that means is she ain't got a job, you know, minimum wage, six pound an hour. But she turned up one morning to this elderly lady's house, she's in her 80s, and um, she'd collapsed. Um, she'd had a stroke, actually, and she'd fallen to a glass coffee table and severely lacerated herself. Um, she rang the emergency services on her own mobile phone, not paid expenses, because, you know, that's just been greedy. Uh, and uh, we still haven't got to the situation yet where our paramedics and our health service um, that are going to face the rest of the runs uh, were that long in coming to the assistance uh, of this elderly lady. She did what she could in the minimal training that you get, uh, put in a recovery position and trying to do something about the severe bleeding. And then she informed her employers what had happened, who, so, who told her that she needed to move on to the next client. Because we're all clients now, by the way. You're not an elderly person, you're not a person, you're a client. And there's nothing more she could do, and she had to move on to her next job. Well, clearly, the young girl didn't do this. She stayed where she was till the paramedics came, and she got severe dressing down and told that she would dis disobey uh, uh, an instruction from the supervisor future, she would lose her job. So that's the sort of future, by the way, that, that we've got. By working all your life, by paying tax all your life, by paying national insurance all your life, you can't work for the public good. You can't work for ourselves uh, and find um, that there's going to be some sort of security blanket for you because you're too greedy. You can't expect to be looked after. You can't expect the state to pay for your pensions. You can't expect any of this. You know, and, and that's where it's moving to. You know, there shouldn't be any sort of room for private health care that makes profit out of people's misery <laughs> in all this. I'm sorry that I'm a little bit late here tonight. I've had, a, I've had a quite a long day. Um, but uh, I'll go back a little bit more into my comfort zone uh, on, on the rail industry. I started work at 15 years old. I come from a large family. I don't know how many of you remember the NAB. National Assistance Board. That's where we're going back to, brothers and sisters. The National Assistance Board. I remember going down with my dad to get a brown paper parcel, an orange and apple, and a mouth organ for Christmas. I remember how much tripled him. I didn't realise that time, because as a kid, you don't really know what, you, what the torment that your parents are going through, that fought in the war, fought to stop all this sort of thing happening again. I realise it now, as I've got older, about that. And that's where these people want to go. The genteel garden parties, with the rich uh, doffing a little bit of uh, their generosity to stop the lazy bastards like us that don't want to go to work. Uh, and I remember that, and I wasn't going to have that, and I left school at 15, and I went into work to help my family. My father died at, uh, in his early 50s when I was 15. He wasn't a miner, he was a baker. But bakers breathed in dust, and he died so he got no assistance, and he didn't get a pension, although he'd worked all his life and fought in the war, he didn't get anything either. And that's where they want to take us back to. That's where, it, that's where it's going. Well, the jobs that we got sacked from, I never asked to, asked to work in the private sector. I actually worked for British Rail, and a Tory government privatised us out of an act of malicious spite. Even Thatcher didn't want to privatise the railways, but Major did it when he knew where he was going. And Labour came back into power, vowing manifesto pledges to overturn this manic, stupid privatisation process. And once they got in power, what did they do? They joined the club. They joined the rich men's club. Worse than that, having worked for 38 years and paid tax and national insurance contributions and all the rest of it, I'm now one of the great unwashed scroungers of society. I've got six months job seekers out, by the way, for 38 years contributions. 
I've got six months. And because I've had to draw my pension seven years early, I ain't gonna get anything after that. Um, but but, but that, that, that's where we, we've got to where that situation is. I guess who's picked up the bill? The contracts for the ex-railway workers um, that have uh, been sacked have been passed on to a private company. The movers, the shakers, the, the wealth creators, that, that's going to be out there. Who's picked up the liability for the pensions? The taxpayer. Who's picked up the liability for no notice for being sacked? The taxpayer. Who's picked up the liability for the redundancy payments? The taxpayer. The company that's been given our contract have actually picked up the profits. That's where they're trying to go with everybody now. I was asked by my wife tonight not to ramble, but there's that much that I need to say. I don't know, I, I don't know what, where, where I should start and where I should finish. But I, I think it'd be remiss of me um, not to just pass on a few things uh, about the sort of people that are left in charge of this country. Uh, I was a Labour Party member for a long time, by the way, and I seem to be having a bit of a go at them. But I solely blame them for the predicament we've been left in. They created Network Rail, a not-for-profit public body that actually appoints its own directors and are not accountable to anybody but themselves. That's what Mr Milliband told me anyway. They can take us to war without any uh, popular uh, vote or, or any cognizance from the, uh, from, the, from the public, but they can't tell Mr Coucher, bastard, sorry, I've, I've, got, I've got selected Tourette's when I, when I mention Network Rail. Mr. Coucher, I believe, is, gets uh, £1,618,000 a year basic salary. Um, an average track worker gets £15,000 a year. I'm not very good on maths, but I think that works out at 40 years pay in one year. Uh, that's either 40 people have a job for 12 months, or one person's got a job for 40 years. I think we need a job for 40 years now because they're pushing the retirement age up. Um, that's not good enough for these people. We need their innovative skills to bring this country forward and drag it forward and, uh, and sort out what we need. So he gets on top of that £600,000 bonus on top of his £618,000 basic pay. I tried to work that out. You know, if I'd have been lucky enough to be allowed to work um, for another 12 years, it would step to 65. Uh, I know we all live a bit longer these days, but I worked it out that I could, if I could have got my full pension that I'd been putting away for, I'd have to live till I was 178 and draw that pension just to get what he got in one year's bonus. That's what I call sharing the pain. That's sharing the pain, Mr. Coucher. Poor oh, shit. Um, you know, uh, uh, and it's where we go with these people. Um, have, I got, have I got another two minutes? I've got one minute. Here, I am that lazy. I've tried to find work, by the way, since I've been sacked. Uh, and another mover and shaker and the initiative of private sector, I'll give you uh, something else that you can expect at minimum wage of £6 an hour. I took a job uh, with a delivery company delivering furniture. Um, I left home at 4 o'clock one morning uh, to go to a place in North Yorkshire. And uh, it's Seaton Ross, it's called Army House Furniture. They should be put out of business, by the way. Uh, and we left there at half past four and we drove to Birmingham to a delivery. We went from Birmingham to Coventry, went from Coventry to Warwick, went from Warwick to Worcester, went from Worcester to Stoke, went from Stoke to another village I can't remember, went from there to Hyde in Cheshire, went from to Hyde in Cheshire to Stockport, went from Stockport to Birmingham, uh, sorry, to Manchester, went from Manchester to Blackburn, went from Blackburn to Heckman Dwight in West Yorkshire, went from Heckman Dwight to Horsford near Leeds, at which point some poor girl had spent £300 uh, on some bedroom furniture that we assembled uh, and it was absolutely crap and rubbish and had been pre-assembled somewhere else and it took us two hours and went from there to Pocklington and delivered a granite table. Went from there back to the depot at Seaton Ross and we loaded the van up for the next day. I got home at 20 past 10 at night, £6 an hour. That's where our wealth creation is coming. The next day I was lucky, I didn't start till 5 o'clock in the morning and I went from York to Peterborough, Peterborough to Stevenage, Stevenage to Wimbledon, Wimbledon to Braintree in Essex, to Chelmsford, to another village, to North Suffolk, to Norwich, to Cromer, and I got back at 9 o'clock at night, it was an early finish. Uh, that's the sort of employment there, they had no work for three weeks, then they rang me again and said, do you want to go to Scotland? I told them to fuck off. <laughs> I'll finish up by just saying that these innocent people, the guy I was working with was drinking can after can of Red Bull and eating chocolate bars. 
We didn't stop for a sandwich because we couldn't have got the deliveries in. And we had to went to the toilet while we were filling up with diesel. It's illegal and it's the failure of the Labour government to repeal these employment laws that allow companies to do this. I never met the bosses of this company because there was actually an holiday in Italy at the villa scuba diving. They're the movers and shakers people. Take to the streets. Yeah.